Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've actually sat behind the camera and done a video because um, my last few have been pre-recorded a while back and it feels a bit rusty, it's kind of weird. Um, I'm in my office where I work from just because uh, Tali, my partner, is downstairs watching Gilmore Girls on TV so I thought I'd come up here and uh, open a parcel which is very exciting. Uh, it's Monday evening here. Uh, we've just had the Wellington Jazz Festival. Um, so I had a busy weekend, which has been really exciting. And uh, a parcel has arrived uh, for me, which I'm very exciting, excited to open. Um, it's from Steve over at Psych in the Valleys, all the way up and across in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, I, I won the contest that Steve put out um, Basically, it was a transport-themed concept around uh, showing record covers with, um, yeah, modes of transport on the cover, and it was a really, really fun, um, exciting contest to do. I don't do them very often, but it really sort of caught my eye, which was a lot of fun. So, hey, Steve, uh, thank you so much. I can't believe you sent me some records um, all the way over here. I, d I did say to Steve, you don't have to send me anything, but uh, he, he absolutely insisted, so... Who am I to say no to a, a parcel of records? So, um, not just one record it seems to be um, a quite a thick parcel. So I feel really grateful and really, really thankful that you know through the vinyl community this sort of stuff happens. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be opening this uh, live on camera for you guys. And again, thank you to Steve. He has an amazing channel. Um, I've said it before, but of people that I, I watch straight away. I, uh, I always go watch Steve's videos. Uh, he's just somebody that I would love to have a beer with in real life at some point, I guess. Um, just, just one of those really nice guys. Um, his channel is called Psych in the Valleys, but he is by no means uh, exclusively a psych record collector. Um, I learnt a shitload from one of his reggae videos he went through. Um, I showed a whole bunch of stuff like that, and yeah, it's uh, really cool stuff. Um, I'm going to open this. If it takes a while, I'm going to try and do some editing and fast forward it and uh, we'll go from there because this is very well packaged, which is just as well because it's been raining, you know, like crazy here. We're obviously going into winter time now. We're sort of at the back end of autumn and I was, I thought to myself, I wonder if this is going to get soaked uh, in the mail. We'll see. I, I don't really know what to expect with this one. Um, Alright, I'll, I'll do some editing and fast forwarding here. I, I always like to do these uh, live unboxing videos because I truly think they're it's a very special occasion to receive records from you know a fellow record collector. Jesus, a stack in here. Uh, yeah, I, I think they're you know totally you know you just have to capture that excitement on the video and it's a very special thing and. Okay, what, what could it be? Here we go. Wow. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, hope hope, uh, hope Bradford bounced back. Yeah, that's right. I support Bradford City who got relegated this year. Um, so they, they finished rock bottom, basically. It was terrible. Hopefully they can, they can get up to uh, League One again. Okay, so the first thing I can see here, which is uh, really cool, is uh, this here. It's the... Uh, was there two in here? Holy crap. Um, okay, I've just seen what another one is, so I'm very excited. Uh, this is the Upsetter Collection. Um, okay, cool. There's a lot of stuff in here I don't know. Uh, wow, this is awesome. Um, yeah, obviously, um, produced by Lee Scratch Perry. This is on Trojan. Um, I guess this is like a, a compilation of Upsetter stuff, which is really cool. Uh, yeah. The upset is the bleachers I'm not familiar with, the gatherers, um, got a lot of reading to do on this. This looks really cool on the Trojan Records label. Um, this is great. Super, super happy. And that's that one. Okay, now this one I am really happy about because I have never heard this. Uh, I don't know why you're sort of sending this along because I, <laughs> I really, really, I've heard lots of good things about this, but uh, uh, I would... I haven't heard it before. Uh, this is uh, Heavy X by uh, David Axelrod. Uh, man, I'll have to definitely report back and, uh, you know, 
tell you what I think about this, which is really exciting. Uh, I can't tell you anything. There's a lot of cool players on here that I would definitely recognize. Um, yeah. Axelrod Heavy Axe. It's just an iconic cover. This looks to be some sort of um, mid-70s uh, pressing. It could even be an original uh, pressing. I'm not quite sure. That's absolutely fantastic. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. What a cover. Jesus, that's a great cover. Um, I don't I don't know this record. Um, Hampton Horse 4. Um, a lot of these guys are obviously the West Coast uh, jazz scene. Um, this looks to be an original jazz classics reissue on Contemporary. Um, wow, this is cool. I, I don't... Yeah, Shelly Mann is an amazing drummer. Um, I love that cover there with the, just the font. Um, <laughs> uh, it just, it's very of its time, isn't it? Uh, yeah, really cool. Red Mitchell, Barney Kessel, Hampton Hawes, Shelley Mann. Now, Hampton Hawes, I'm not really familiar massively with his style of playing. Um, I'm definitely going to uh, do a listening session and maybe I'll edit it into the second half of this video. We'll see how we go. Ah, yes. Oh, he's written me a note on this one. Oh, obviously, uh, Toby Hayes, a British jazz legend. This is the uh, the UK Jasmine pressing of After Lights Out. I remember you showed this very recently in a video. Um, but I have uh, Toby Hayes uh, called Toby's Groove on the same label, but I don't have this one. And this one has got a completely different set of players that I don't recognize. Um, Dickie Horden, Harry South, Pete Elderfield, and Bill Iden on drums. Um, so yeah, this, this looks really interesting. I don't know the rest of the players. Um, cool, yeah. So this is this is the yeah, originally came out in 1956. I imagine originals are you know near impossible to get. Uh, I had a feeling you may send me some sort of uh, British jazz uh, record. So yeah, really happy. I I'm super intrigued. Um, by some of these, uh, especially yeah, this one and the heavy axe, I think. Um, in terms of like nailing the stuff that I really like and I'm really interested in, I think you've got it like exactly down. Um, in terms of albums that I need to check out, see, you can see the reflection of my laptop in here, it's a bit weird. Um, you know, and stuff I'm getting into. Um, I'm really sort of uh, investigating. Uh, yeah, def definitely uh, hit the nail on the head. This is fantastic, man. Uh, I need to. I do want to send you something at some point. I know it's not the the VC obligation and stuff, but uh, I yeah. There's just there's lots of people I want to send records to, but I've sort of got a couple of things in mind that I think you would really like. Um, it's just some of the stuff's very hard to get in New Zealand, but you know for good reason. Um, I kind of like the idea of sending you some the New Zealand equivalent of some of the things you like, um, but I'll see what I can do. Anyway, thank you heaps, man. This is this is really great. I will um, stop saying thank you and I'll cut this bit here and I'll do a bit of a listening session and come back in a few days with my thoughts. Cool. Talk soon. editing we are back um, three days later and I have developed a cold in those three days so I'm feeling really crap um, but the good news is I really enjoyed the records um, I've pretty much spent the last sort of three days listening to these four albums exclusively um, yeah really good fun I'll, I'll go through them more quickly and give you my thoughts um, no surprises but the favorite was a uh, heavy axe uh, Axelrod. Uh, I did mention previously that I wasn't that familiar with the, with this one. It's got an absolutely iconic uh, cover, um, and lots of people playing here that I don't recognise. But a few names that stick out uh, is Gene Adams, uh, Gene Ammons, Cannonball Adderley. Um, there's a few on George Duke. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> What a mustache. Um, for th This is something that I 
was expecting to be like, oh, this is okay, but it's, I actually couldn't stop playing this this week. Um, really good. I mean, there's a little less focus on the really delicate um, orchestration that, that uh, David Axelrod does and a bit more of a focus on a um, fu really funky, almost rocky beat going on. Um, yeah, really fantastic. Even the cover of uh, You're So Vain by Carly Simon should not really work. But it absolutely works. Uh, I really, really enjoy this. Um, at this moment in time, I prefer it to Songs of Experience, which I know is a massive call, but that's the one that I couldn't really get into. Um, I do like the Poison Tree, the opening track. That's actually really breathtaking. But for me, as a cohesive album, I can't get into it. So Songs of Innocence, I love. No questions asked, but this is pretty much a close second now. Um, yeah, I really like this. I It was just a really nice surprise about how much I liked it. It was very cool. One sec. What I didn't show in the last uh, the last part of the video is this really cool note that came over from Steve. Um, obviously this bit in here I'm not going to pronounce, but it's in uh, Welsh. Um, Welsh, I guess, has a distinct lack of vowels. So I'm not going to pronounce it, um, but but Steve uh, just mentioned, um, you know, thanks for taking the time for the contest, and he mentioned that he hopes uh, Bradford City bounce back. Um, my team were relegated at the end of last season, basically bottom of of League One, so they're down to League Two. So with a miracle, they'll become the champions of League Two and get promoted next year, but probably won't happen. Um, they've offloaded a whole bunch of players. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, they're, they're sort of traveling to less and less exotic locations. I think the first game next year is against uh, Grimsby Town. Anyway, uh, yeah, so without getting distracted, I've talked about the axle rod. Highly recommend this. The other thing about this is it came in the shrink. And I can't figure out if this is just a really, really tidy original copy, which would be pretty cool, or if it's the 2000s reissue. I'm, I'm basically sure it's the 2000s reissue. Although, the inner sleeve seems really kind of old, and there was a bit of noise on it, which it's really hard to tell because there's nothing on Discogs. Um, it does have des uh, dead wax numbers, but I can't read them. I don't really care either way. Um, I really enjoyed this. What a pleasant surprise. The other one I was very surprised at is something that I... I when was it? Tuesday I got into this really weird groove where I played this record about four or five times over. Now normally guitar jazz is not my thing, and normally I sort of avoid it based on a you know a prejudged notion um, that I'm not a fan. But um, this one really struck a chord with me, and it's weird because it's not particularly experimental or it's not particularly. Um, it kind of just goes on and on, but in a really cool way. There's a really nice brightness to this record, or, or liveliness. Um, they're playing very playfully. Um, it just seems to flow really nicely. and It's described, you know, I read the back and they're talking about how they want to create a record where it's a, it is a four-way conversation. It's not, you know, there's not a band leader. Um, we know. I think uh, you know Shelly Mann on here was saying he does, doesn't want the drummer to be driving it and everybody else playing towards him. The, the idea was to, to really try and go around a, a four-way, I guess, way of playing. And I really enjoy this. I'm not going to tell you it's the best record in the whole world and it's not, it's not a, a game changer, but for some reason I just couldn't keep it off the turntable. I just kept playing it and playing it and the songs are starting to get a bit more familiar and I'm picking out a few things here and there. Um, yeah, really cool. I, I guess... I was saying before, these guys were around the uh, West Coast LA jazz scene, and I sort of, you know, maybe I can attribute a bit of that to that scene as a bit more brighter, a bit more fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 weird. I this is an absolute keeper, um, just because I just couldn't take it off the table, and I just I turned it over and over and over, and I really really enjoyed it. It just felt really nice to play. Um, again, it's probably not an essential jazz record, but. You just gotta have fun with these things, you know. Actually, no. We'll go. We'll go over to the UK. Um, after lights out, Tubby Hairs Quintet. 
Um, Steve sent me this one. I, I'm familiar with Tubby Hayes, but I didn't know this record or I didn't, um, wasn't familiar with the rest of the band members. Now this is probably a bit more of a, I guess, uh, sultry or late nights mixed with like a swing vibe to it. Really interesting stuff. Uh, it sounds fantastic as well. Um, yeah, I mean, to, to compare it to this, this, this one I would say was sort of like bright and playful and, um, yeah, I, I guess not daytime, but yeah, they've got a real zing. It sounds like it's been recorded in a sun filled room and it's definitely not a late night record where this is one of those things that you put on, you know, with a, with a whiskey at the end of the night. Um, really cool. And the last one is what you can, what you're playing in the back here in the background is the upsetter collection. Now, the cool thing about this is it's actually a collection of early Upsetter stuff. So I think it was like 1978 to 81, something like that. I can't read it. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of cool stuff that's really kind of catchy and fascinating and a lot of things I hadn't heard before. Um, I do have Super Ape and a couple of other things, but there's um, um, yeah stuff on here I definitely hadn't heard before. Um, I really like the track Black IPA. Um, yeah. Really cool. Really happy to get this. Uh, it's just cool to explore reggae a bit more in detail um, and get the early stuff. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, it's really cool. I've got quite a varied uh, VCLT package and I surprised myself by how much I really enjoyed those. Um, so again, thank you so much for sending these to me. I, I'm really happy. Um, I'm not quite ready to file these away yet. These are going to stay in the new arrivals for, the, for a week or so. Um, yeah. Cool. All right, that brings me to the end. Again, thank you, Steve. Uh, please check out his channel. Again, I'll put a link below um, and stay tuned. All right.